so hi uh, guys uh, today i am going to talk about uh, building and scaling a log analytics platform using serverless approach and for a hard work is like the dead is so long um yeah so here she spoke about all our uh, microservices and i just continue from where he left off uh, this is not going to be a comical one it'll be more of like a technical one and uh, we'll be uh, having uh, uh, more or less a live demo uh, in the next half of the talk and let's get started so before i start a uh, bit about me i'm uh, narain i work as a product engineer at master eden probably you should know by now it's an AI startup and I love coding in Python, Golang and I'm an open source enthusiast. I, yeah, that's how my usual day looks like. Uh, I'll be either sitting in doc uh, partner and uh, coding. If I'm not coding, I'll be cycling outside. If I'm not doing both, you know, I'll be treating myself with some good food. Uh, I'm insanely active in Twitter. You can follow me in Twitter. Uh, that handle due to code and that's my website and blog. So yeah, before uh, going to the talk, let me do a quick count. So how many of them here, here have used uh, serverless in production? You? Okay, how many of them have heard of serverless? You know serverless, what is serverless? Uh, so can I assume this doesn't know what a serverless is? Yes or no? Fine. Uh, so, as uh, Srini uh, explained, um, we uh, just uh, uh, you know abstracted a very large monolithic architecture and uh, we brought up uh, microservices. Uh, it pretty much it uh, operates very well, but it's somehow chaotic like this. We need to know uh, what all the each microservice is doing, how how much latency it's uh, taking, or is it uh, you know affecting our SLA. So for that, we need to come up with a proper logging framework. And uh, we, uh, the team sat together, we, as usual, we had a brainstorm session and we came up with uh, an architecture. And even before coming up with the architecture, we uh, need to be analyze the different behaviors of the services. So um, as uh, uh, Srini said, uh, we had few services which, uh, which is the ingestion part, which is the crunching of the data. Uh, those services mostly it will be idle. Uh, it, it kicks off only when the client sends their data. And the other end of the um, uh, thing is uh, the API service, which is, uh, which is active all the time. And there will be surges and spikes. And there we need uh, the real-time data. So these are the, some of the behaviors of our services or behaviors of different, I mean, any microservice. Uh, there will be uh, um, it will be horizontal scaling during traffic and there will be rapid scale down. So and the, uh, any logging framework. So these are the expectations from a logging framework, and it will, it, uh, a logging framework should be dynamically scalable along with your microservices. Should be highly available, secure. It should be highly performing, and the logging framework should not be your bottleneck for your microservice. And there shouldn't be any data loss or overwriting. And uh, uh, before designing our architecture, we uh, separated our microservices into uh, two groups, uh, or uh, the log which we are getting into two groups. One is uh, real-time analysis and the historical analysis. Now, uh, so that we can architect our, uh, um, you know, uh, the logging framework based on this. So mostly the API parts, uh, we uh, needed the real-time analytics because it will be directly impacting our, uh, you know, the uh, client's SLA or their website. And uh, the other, uh, uh, in, uh, the uh, in, I mean, the first part, which is the ingestion, it uh, we can uh, do historical analysis or batch analysis on that, like how many, how much data we crunched, like our past month, and we didn't uh, need any uh, real time or mission critical analysis on that. So, and then we came up with a conventional architecture. Uh, we had um, uh, the clients. Uh, the clients will be pushing the uh, microservices, sorry, the logs to the uh, logging uh, microservice, and we had some uh, highly persistent queue, uh, which is uh, Kafka, 
we had two subscribers. One subscriber will uh, direct the logs into the real time pipeline, and the other one, uh, actually, this one is the real time pipeline, the one at the bottom, and the top one is uh, for the cold storage or statistical analysis. And for cold storage, we used, we tried Postgres, we used uh, uh, InfluxDB, and uh, to visualize that, we uh, used Kibana. We uh, took a batch from the cold storage and uh, we used uh, Kibana and Grafana to visualize. Then uh, to visualize the real time uh, logs and set the alerts, we uh, uh, went for the traditional uh, L stack. And uh, we had a log stash um, uh, Docker instances and uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana set up in different instances. So this is how our uh, old architecture looked like. Uh, we uh, face some problems, especially with uh, Elk. So, uh, if you have been using Elk, uh, you will know that there is uh, something called uh, uh, thread pool queue size, which is uh, default of 200. It's based on your machine size, and it will, you know, uh, it will cause uh, the latency uh, if your uh, log or data throughput increases. Uh, this will be a bottleneck, and uh, of course, uh, uh, the only way to avoid this is uh, scale up your machine. But we were burning uh, more money. Uh, if we had to scale up the machine, uh, we were not able to auto scale it. Since uh, it, it, has, it is a distributed uh, data store, uh, scaling up and scaling down was not so easy. It took some uh, time to redistribute the data and the shards between the different nodes on the cluster. And adding log stash filters, which means adding filters to modify the logs on the fly, was a pain. People need to know uh, God, which is a kind of regex, uh, or regex to add a uh, log stash filter. Or either you, sh uh, you should know uh, Ruby, you should directly go and edit the log stash Ruby code to add new filters. And uh, the other problem we faced is who is going to monitor all the systems that is monitoring other systems, which is Meta. And uh, here, since um, we had uh, Kafka, and we uh, had to maintain our uh, clusters. We had to maintain the. Uh, we had to keep an eye on the uptime of the clusters, uh, the offsets, nodes, and uh, uh, in the L stack, uh, as I said, the auto scaling was not possible. We had to uh, burn some money on idle time. So we saw the. Uh, we designed the first version of the architecture. Then we found something very common in that blocks, which are servers. And every time people asking you why the server went down that night. So then we figured out, okay, uh, so we are designing a logging framework which is to, uh, you know, uh, make, I mean, uh, ease the pressure from the developers as well as uh, the other microservices and the logging framework should not be a pressure. So then we decided to go serverless. So uh, since people, uh, since few people told uh, we are not, I mean, not aware of serverless. Let me. Here's the Wikipedia definition of serverless. To make it simple, it's just you don't have to maintain your servers. You can deploy your code. Everything will be managed by your provider. And uh, when uh, uh, AWS released or announced their Lambda uh, uh, CTO of Amazon told uh, no server is easier to maintain than no server, but all your serverless architectures, all the services runs on servers. Uh, then why we call it serverless? It's just because all the heavy lifting or uh, it's, it's uh, hidden from the developer and you don't need to maintain the servers. And whenever you put your code, um, it will be uh, stored in a container and uh, uh, you can set an event to trigger your code and it will just uh, spin up a new instance in a uh, uh, few milliseconds or microseconds. Then it will, the code will get executed. So you will be paying only for the time in which the code gets executed. And yeah, so we uh, came up with the first version which involved the servers and we uh, decided, okay, we had to go with serverless architecture. and. Since uh, we heavily use uh, AWS, uh, we, uh, uh, we thought, okay, fine, we will go explore uh, the uh, uh, serverless uh, uh, services offered by AWS. And 
Okay, what's the one uh, thing that comes to your mind when someone says Cerebrus Avalus? Panda. 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 Yeah. But, hold on. Lambda is not the only service that AWS offers. Even before Lambda, they were offering different managed services which are serverless. Let's see about them. So that's how our fast architecture or function as a service architecture look like. And we have uh, the clients as usual, the clients which are pushing the data to the uh, logs to the server. Sorry, serverless. And uh, we had uh, Amazon Kinesis, uh, we replaced Kafka with Amazon Kinesis. Uh, Kinesis is nothing but uh, uh, it's a queuing service, uh, can easily configure uh, your uh, producers and consumers and just click off a button and deliver your data to the destination. And we use Lambda to uh, transform the logs on the fly, which is instead of log stash. And uh, for cold storage, we use AWS S3 and S3 probably should have uh, known about S3, it's, uh, you can store data in massive scale and half of the internet uses S3. When S3 goes down, half of the internet in the US goes down, which happened last December. And uh, we use uh, Athena. Athena is um, a beautiful uh, querying service. It's a serverless querying service, so you can point your uh, source, data source. Uh, it can be either from S3 or a CSV file or even Salesforce dash dashboard. And you can do SQL queries on the unstructured data. And uh, we uh, visualize the uh, batch uh, data using uh, QuickSight. Uh, QuickSight is another uh, managed uh, visualization tool provided by AWS. And that's the historical analysis part. Now coming to the uh, real-time part, we used kin Kinesis Log Analytics for uh, running uh, SQL queries uh, on the real-time data. So it more or less uh, Kinesis Log Analytics to an extent can replace Spark Streaming or Storm. So you can um, filter your data and run uh, SQL uh, queries on the fly uh, in real time. And then to visualize, uh, since QuickSight was not supporting uh, you know the real time uh, uh, data visualization, moreover it was for uh, batch or business insights. And we used CloudWatch to visualize the uh, real-time data. And we set up few triggers in CloudWatch uh, where uh, we uh, connected, uh, used uh, Twilio APIs or um, uh, PagerDuty to uh, you know, uh, get an alert uh, during some <coughs> incidents or any failures. So that's how our uh, fast architecture looked like. I think I explained it in a single slide. Let's go through. And uh, this is how you can manage any serverless model. Uh, either you have to use your provider's web console, uh, mostly, mostly it will be uh, enough for you. Or uh, you can, if you're using, uh, you can use uh, the SDKs provided by your uh, infrastructure provider. Um, for us, it was AWS, it is AWS, so we use uh, AWS SDK since we use Python. We use uh, Boto3, <coughs> which is the official SDK, or you can, um, you know, uh, interact with the uh, uh, serverless uh, through your command line. Let's get to see the demo. And uh, actually, I have a, a live uh, demo or tabs open uh, running uh, in, uh, behind, but uh, according to Murphy's law, I am going to mess up on stage, so I am. Uh, we will show some screencast which I took yesterday. So this is our fast architecture. The first, first part is the kinesis. We are setting up the uh, kinesis stream, which is the kinesis uh, dash dashboard. And we uh, give a name for our stream. And uh, we can uh, give, give the number of shards since it's just going to be uh, sample logs. Uh, we're going to push sample logs, so we are giving shard number as one, and we are creating the Kinesis stream. So the entry entry point to our uh, serverless pipeline is uh, created, and uh, next we need to uh, the next thing if you remember it's the lambda. We need to transform the records, so we need to create a lambda function, 
and Lambda has uh, uh, different uh, templates. Um, you can uh, search for Python or Kinesis uh, template, something like that, and uh, or you can just uh, author from scratch, scratch which means uh, write it by yourself. So you are uh, naming a function. And we are setting our uh, roles. So this is the popular AWS Lambda dashboard. Uh, since we are going to use Python, we are changing our runtime to Python. Then we will uh, paste our uh, code. Uh, what this code does is it does nothing. Uh, for at least for this demo, it just it just it just acts as a pass through. But we can. Uh, you know, manipulate the logs uh, using any conditions or whatever, and you can even do conditional routing in Lambda. So, we have uh, typed our code into the um, Lambda console. Now, there are a few other uh, uh, features like uh, you can set up the environment variables if you have to. Uh, uh, if you are using some API keys, uh, instead of doing that in your code, you can set up uh, environment variables for that. The, uh, the roles and permissions and Lambda, for each uh, Lambda function, AWS provides you uh, memory. You can increase the memory and uh, time modes for that. Then you can set up VPCs and uh, real-time debugging of your code. So every time you don't have to push the uh, real data to test your Lambda function, to kick off a Lambda function, AWS provides a test event. And uh, you can go uh, select a test event and configure it. The test event mocks the data uh, from your data source. Our data source is Kinesis, so test event gives a mock data of Kinesis or from Kinesis that's uh, getting executed. And we we'll just able to see the data which we sent through. So the next one is uh, we have created a, a lambda to transform the data. Now we have to deliver the data to the S3 bucket, which is the cold storage. For that, we have to create a Kinesis delivery stream. And we are naming it, we have create, created the, the uh, source is the Kinesis stream which we created, the entry point. And we are naming, I mean, we are uh, mentioning the uh, entry point of our data, which is the Kinesis stream. which you created a while back. Then it asks whether you need to transform the records using lambda. So we just wrote a lambda function. Uh, uh, we say yes, I'm going to uh, transfer the records on the fly and we are configuring the lambda or uh, giving the uh, lambda function's name. Uh, and the one thing here is uh, lambda allows you to do versioning. So for example, if you have added a new feature uh, to your function, and you can just uh, uh, go and publish it as a new version and tag it. Uh, so whenever you find uh, this function is failing for a few events, you can roll back to your previous versions. And the source is the entry point Kinesis stream and the destination is our cold storage S3 bucket. So uh, we are telling Kinesis stream to put the logs into our S3 bucket choose our destination, specify our prefix, which is basically a parent folder inside the S3. We don't need any backup, so let's go and uh, give the buffer size. So uh, Kinesis does uh, holds, on a holds on a batch. So, sorry, uh, it holds uh, a batch of data. So whenever uh, it reaches the buffer size of uh, the uh, mentioned buffer size or the buffer interval, it will just push the data towards destination. Okay, uh, Okay. now we are choosing uh, the uh, permissions and roles for the Kinesis stream. And here's the summary in, of our configurations. Then we create a delivery stream. So we have created a, a, a Kinesis stream, this is the entry point. We transformed it using Lambda. Then we created a Kinesis Firehose to uh, take from that stream and deliver to AWS S3. Now we'll push some sample logs so that we can uh, do query on that. I've written a very uh, uh, simple script uh, which uh, pushes a dictionary 
with service response created data and client latency as keys. It will push to our pipeline and uh, when you start pushing, it, will, it should flow through the uh, streams, it will, should get transformed with the lambda, then it should be delivered to S3. So we will start pushing. And if you uh, see the uh, Kinesis, uh, you know, the uh, mo monitoring uh, dashboard, monitor dashboard, we can see the logs uh, flowing through, there will be multiple uh, spikes uh, of events happening. So you can use this uh, dashboard to debug uh, or, you know, uh, get your uh, metrics, your throughput of your data. And we are going, uh, checking out the S3 uh, bucket, we are able to see our logs. So, the logs are stored uh, as multiple uh, files. Since we gave the buffer size as 1 MB, which is very small, and uh, in a short period of time, the multiple uh, files have been created. And this is AWS Athena. Now we have our logs in our S3 bucket. We need to query, do SQL query on that. We are uh, writing a SQL query, which is uh, create table, and we are mentioning the, if you remember, I showed you in the code, right, the uh, key names of the JSON log object. I'm showing it again. I have to do a voiceover. This is screen cast. Hold on. So yeah, these are the keys and we are mentioning that inside a SQL query and the data source which is the S3 bucket. When we run the query, now we'll be able to see a table which is getting created. This data is pulled from S3 and it's uh, 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 you know, a relational table were created for us. We can uh, run any random uh, SQL queries now from uh, our S3 bucket or the data from the data in the S3 bucket. So, we are able to get the service. Service are nothing but your Nightwing, Joker, Gordon. And next, we need to visualize our batch or historical logs. We create a new uh, data source in Athena. Right now our data source is, sorry, uh, data source in QuickSight. Right now our data source is Athena. Since uh, we queried from the S3 and uh, it's waiting for us as uh, the SQL tables. And uh, it's preparing the SQL query. So, uh, now we have uh, we are selecting the uh, tables which we saw in AWS Athena. Uh, what? Let me skip to the past. And. So, uh, in the uh, left column, you can see all our uh, eight, uh, in the keys uh, from the log message we sent. We are able to visualize and uh, uh, take quick ad hoc or business insights from the batch. Next, uh, we go to the real time analysis pipeline. Uh, here, we are using uh, something called Kinesis Analytics, which I told you can run uh, SQL queries on your real time data. We are creating the Kinesis Analytics application and the source of the data is our uh, another Kinesis uh, queue. We are mentioning the Kinesis queue. This is a string and we are not going to pre-process anything. So we, there is something called a discover schema. Uh, so as and when the logs uh, flows through or the data flows through, Kinesis Analytics will try to discover the schema uh, based on the keys you are sending. So it, uh, it successfully discovered a schema. Now it, it's able to show uh, 
or uh, you know uh, the keys as uh, the columns in a table then uh, uh, we go to the query editor and uh, You go to the query editor. Uh, there, uh, there is something. Kinesis uh, Analytics uh, has something called uh, um, uh, streams and uh, forms. So a stream is nothing but uh, uh, there, there's a main stream of uh, real-time data flowing uh, through a system, right? You can uh, create an, another uh, uh, stream uh, by uh, picking up specific fields from the main stream, then. Uh, you can start pumping the data through it. You can do some SQL queries on the data and uh, start uh, start pumping the data through it. So we are creating uh, some stream called eBay stream. This is our uh, source uh, stream, and uh, once you go to the real time analysis, analytics tab, yes, you are running first uh, the, from the main stream. Uh, the, a new stream is getting created and uh, a pump is uh, getting created which will pump only the eBay data, do the uh, query on the real-time incoming data and pumps the eBay data to that substream or the eBay stream. So our uh, eBay stream uh, got created and as you can uh, see like uh, as and when the logs uh, comes in, uh, the, the query which we wrote here, a uh, simple SQL query is getting applied on each and every uh, data we receive through the uh, pipeline in real time. And we can visualize it uh, using uh, the uh, uh, Amazon CloudWatch uh, service. So uh, Amazon CloudWatch has uh, many uh, dashboards, more or less like Kibana, it has many dashboards and uh, except that you don't have to maintain the servers. Uh, um, dashboards, many dashboards and different widgets. So these are some uh, of our production, um, uh, you know, uh, metrics, uh, in, uh, the Nightwing's uh, CPU utilization, Robin CPU utilization, uh, Batman CPU utilization, so the ingestion part which is the crunching the data. So that's it. Like uh, within few minutes, you are able to uh, architect or you know assemble the components from the AWS, uh, and uh, you are able to architect a uh, logging pipeline, which we did, and we pushed uh, sample logs through it. We uh, ran SQL queries in real time. We ran SQL queries in uh, batch mode as well. The uh, pipeline which we set up now, it's horizontally scalable and since all the uh, service side is managed by the AWS which is your provider, you can now use this pipeline uh, just for production and it will uh, scale automatically, uh, the uh, infinitely theoretically, uh, like uh, based on your throughput. And the summary, uh, the usual architect architecture which we uh, uh, you know, design at first, it, uh, there, there has to be a certain level of expertise and, uh, you know, we needed a guy or a resource to learn Kafka about uh, its uh, system and it took some weeks and months uh, to deploy and maintain and the serverless ar architecture we were able to, as you can see, we were able to uh, do it in, uh, uh, you know, minutes and uh, no maintenance, uh, nearly zero developer interventions after deployment. Uh, once we, a part of this architecture which we showed is in production right now, and uh, the last time uh, we visited the architecture is when we deployed it, or uh, when we, you know, when it started ingesting the data. So we didn't intervene after that. It uh, scales up and down automatically based on throughput. And yeah, I am running out of bullet points. You guys have any questions? We have three minutes for questions. Yes. Um, so
So I'm thing that I'm really interested in knowing is uh, you're using Lambda for processing every log message that's being sent to Kinesis, yeah. right? Uh, how does the cost behave? So if a developer who just joins in, who unknowingly adds one log statement to say a Nightwing or your Robin, which is a sender or that takes in millions of requests, yeah. my Lambda cost is going to shoot up and I don't even know if that's the cost because Lambda is costed based on every invocation. Yes. So how do you guys handle or manage that whole cost under control of service? Uh, uh, right now, um, uh, we know uh, what uh, Lambda cost, and uh, there are a few, uh, you know, um, uh, you can put few monitors on your serverless, uh, you know, logging for your logging framework, actually, and you can uh, do cost alerts in your uh, AWS uh, dashboard. Incidents no, we didn't have uh, such incidents. Any other question? And uh, yeah, uh, so slides are uh, there in my website. So will there be any latency? Because sometimes work I used to online or learning portal that's completely the same using serverless. Okay. I could feel the uh, latency in that. So compared to the regular uh, server uh, server application, server case. Uh, it uh, that can be uh, some latency, but we haven't experienced uh, such latency because it's a logging uh, framework at the end of the day, and uh, only the first part where the clients uh, will be pushing the logs has to be uh, you know uh, maintained in SLA, and the first part is case is uh, stream. When we uh, 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 so far we haven't faced any issues in uh, Kinesis stream. Kinesis stream works on based on HTTP calls, and um, I. Yes, um, uh, and we faced this issue in SQS, which is also another managed uh, queue. Uh, when when we are pushing logs from our uh, uh, the, the microservices to SQS, that specific uh, line was uh, affecting our SLA. Then we uh, put up a Redis uh, PubSub or a cache kind of thing before that, which uh, you know uh, solved that. So it depends depends on the use case and. Uh, Latency uh, can be there, but you have to decide uh, which part of the pipeline you need to reduce the latency. Thank you. Thank you.